Good morning children. Today our topic is sorting materials into groups. So there are so many materials around us. If you just look at your around you, you will find so many materials, so many things around us. If you are in a classroom, you can find so many things, blackboard, chalk piece or marker, eraser, benches, tables, charts, wall clock, tube lights, fan. So likewise, you find so many things around you. If you come out of the classroom, just if you enter the ground, you find so many things, so many sports items. You may find balls and bats, rackets, shuttlecocks. So likewise, you will find different kind of things. If you go to your principal room, then you will find so many things. You will find a table, a chair, you may, you may find a globe, you may find a paperweight, you may find some of the stationery, some files. So likewise. So here in this lesson, we are going to talk about how to group the different things that we see around us. How to group them, how the grouping is done. Before that, we need to know the importance of grouping. What is the necessity of grouping? Why should we group the things? Grouping always helps us in which way? Grouping always helps us to study the things in a better way, to study the things in an easiest way. I will give you an example. Say for example, you are going to study about different things. So you are going to just know about cola, coca cola. Just you wanted to know about Pepsi thumbs up. So you find all these are similar. So you grouped them all under soft drinks. You kept all the brands Pepsi, Coca Cola, thumbs up, so Fanta, Maza, all this you kept one category. So there you have studied one particular thing. You have taken Coke and you studied it. Right. So what you studied it, it is a water based soft drink. It is mixed with some sweetener and it is added with some flavor and it is added with some carbon dioxide. So it is a carbonated water with a sweetener with a specific flavor. So whatever you have studied about that particular one is applied to all the other things also. You need not study the next one, next one because all are similar. So that is the importance of grouping. The importance of grouping is that if you study the properties of one particular thing, so the other things which are similar to this, you need not study about each and every one separately in detail. You can apply this to that all. In general, you can apply. Maybe in specific, you may know some other differences. There may be some little differences, but mostly they will be having the same general properties. Right? So the items that are made up of paper, they will have similar proper properties. Book is made up of paper. Right? A booklet is a newspaper is made up of paper, a newspaper and book, two different items, but they are made up of paper. So paper exhibit the same property. What is that property? It becomes wet if you put some water. If you light it, it will, it will burn to ashes. So it has the similar property, whether it is in the form of a book or in the form of a paper. Right? So. When you group all the things that are made up of paper, if you study the properties of one thing that is applied to all. If a paper, it burns by lighting, a book also burns by lighting. The similarity, right? So that is the necessity of grouping. So here, uh, let us see, we have written so many items here on the board. A school bag, book, writing pad, pen, screwdriver, board, scissors, glass bowl, paper clip, ruler, pencil, ping pong ball. Eraser, CD, watch, water bottle, pencil box and gloves. So all these are the different items. So somebody asked you to group these things. So these are the things given to you and you are asked to group them. How you are going to group? So we will pick up some property or some character on which we will make them into groups. Which property you can pick up? Anything you can pick up. Here you are... Uh, you wanted to segregate them on basing the property shape, the first one shape. You have chosen shape. 
So on basing the shape, you would like to keep all the round ones one side and flat ones one side or rectangular or square ones on one side and circular or round ones on the other side. Rectangular, square, circular. So what is round here? Round. So in your idea CD, you can write to take the CD here and what else is here? And uh, clock, sorry, lock, lock may be like this. So you may consider this lock as also round. And uh, what else you can take here? So that's all, you don't have anything else here. If you wanted to pick the ones that are in rectangular shape or square shape, you can take the book, you can take the board, and you can take the ruler and you can take the eraser and you can take the pencil box, writing pad. So all these things that are either in the form of a square or a rectangle, square or a rectangle. So likewise you can segregate. But here is a confusion. So you separated some items. CD is round. These items which we have marked those are rectangular or square. What about the other things paper clip? So if you take the property shape, it is not possible to segregate all because certain shapes are confusing. They don't have a specific shape, right? They don't have a specific shape. So how do you classify it? So there is a problem. That means you can take any character, any property you can use to separate the items, separate the materials, segregate the materials, group the materials. But you should see that the property which you are picking up, it should do the justice. It should solve the whole thing, not half of the thing. Here only a few things are classified. Many of the things were left unclassified because you have picked up the property shape. Right? So you can take the second one purpose. You can classify the things on basing the purpose, how they are used. So here I have looked at these and I wanted to segregate them. Many of these items I feel like they are used for schooling in your classroom for study purpose. So I am classifying the things that are useful for study purpose. School bag, book, writing pad, pencil, pencil box, pen and uh, eraser, CD, water bottle, paper clip, scissors, ruler, board, water bottle, most of the things. But even then. Sometimes, if you are doing these kind of grouping, you may not be knowing the purpose of certain items. You don't know what is that item even. You don't know the purpose of it. Sometimes, the objects, they may not be used for a single purpose. Right? How can I say that roller is used only for the study purpose? The ruler may be used by anybody to measure anything. So it may be used in carpentry, it may be used in engineering, it may be used by a tailor. So. There is a confusion, right? So you have to put it in so many places. In the same way, eraser also, how can you say that it is only used in uh, learning purpose? So on basing the purpose also, we can classify the things, okay, right? But there also there is some, there will be some confusion in classifying. You cannot do it completely, right? But here you get an idea how to classify the things. You can classify the things on basing any property depending upon your requirement. You can pick up the things that are made up of either paper or wood. You can easily pick up. You can pick up the things that are made up of plastic. What are the things made up of plastic? Pencil box is made up of plastic. Gloves are made up of plastic and a CD is made up of plastic, water bottle and a ruler. Right, pen, these items are made up of plastic. In the same way, you can pick up the items which are made up of wood. So when you see the things around you, you can use all these ideas, the shape, the purpose, the weight, all these ideas, heavy objects, light objects. Okay. Right. On basing that, you can separate them. Here we have come to the idea material, by which material they are made up of on basing that you can classify. This is more systematic. 
classifying the things on basing the materials with which they are made up of is a very systematic classification, good classification. Items made up of plastic, items made up of iron, items made up of paper, items made out of wood, this is a better classification. Right? So, this is systematic. So, how do we know that with which material they are made up of? Generally, if you study about the materials, you will be learning about the materials in your school level or college level about different metals and non-metals and different materials and their properties. So, you will be knowing that what sort of materials are used to make different objects. And even it is very simple that when you look at some object, you will be easily identifying with what material that is made up of. So, you might be holding the smartphone, uh, smartphones these days. You can see the smartphone and say that what materials are used in making that. The outer case is made out of plastic. The surface is made up with a glass, tempered glass. So, likewise you will be able to identify the materials. Right. So, classifying the things on basing the materials used is more systematic. Now, you can draw a table and you can write each object and with what, what material it is made up of. You can write the pencil box made out of plastic, take the lock made out of metal, either steel or brass, the lock is made up of steel or brass or iron. You can take pen, it is made up of plastic, eraser, it is made up of a material called rubber, right? And glass bowl, it is made up of a material called glass. Glass is the material. Screwdriver, it is made up of a combination of steel as well as with a plastic handle. And a board, a board is made up of wood. Scissors is made up of a metal. Roller is made up of either wood. Uh, wooden rollers are available as well as plastic rollers are available. And a watch is made up of plastic casing inside the metal machine and uh, water bottle is made out of plastic either plastic or metal. So, here now we could do we could touch each and everything here we did not leave anything. Of course, sometimes you might not be knowing exactly what it is. Generally, if you see certain items you find it is plastic, but there are so many number of plastics. But with a naked eye just with a touch we cannot identify and tell that what kind of type of plastic it is. It need to be tested to know what kind of plastic it is exactly. Anyway, but we can identify it is a plastic. How do we identify it is plastic because of its properties? How do we identify it is wood because of its properties? Its hardness, its bending, its stretching. So, all these tests we will come to know in the higher classes. What are the different properties? In your higher classes you will learn how do steel items behave? How do gold items behave? How do copper items and silver items behave? So, the various properties of the metals and all these things. Right, but here we have taken one point that classifying the objects on basing the materials by which they are made up of is a systematic way of sorting the things. So, sorting materials into groups. So, we are sorting these materials into different different groups. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.